let us pray. So God, our Father, we come to you this morning. We come with all our hearts and we come thanking you for the gift of Jesus. Thanking you for the gift of salvation. For once we were blind. For once we walked in the world. For once we walked in confusion. Little did we know, God, that it was all darkness and condemnation until you sent unto us your only begotten Son, that as many that believes in him should not perish, but enjoy and live eternal life. So that, Lord, coming to know Christ, whom you sent unto us, we might live forever. For us, O oh God, we pray that we may know Christ and we may experience the power of his resurrection. And we may also proclaim this and bring this announcement to the ears, hearts, and lives of all men and women. God, that before your coming, souls shall be converted into your kingdom for this is your charge unto us grant us the grace to be able to execute it we make our prayer through christ our lord amen amen readings for the 37th day during the lenten season today is the 25th Today is the 25th of March, and it is the solemnity of the Annunciation. It is also the anniversary of this Zoom program, one year exactly since we have been doing this, and we thank God also for today. Shall we take the reading? The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz saying, ask for a sign from the Lord, your God. Let it be deep as the neither world or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, listen, O house of David, is it not enough? Is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. The virgin shall be with a child and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wish not, but ears open to obedience you give me. Holocaust, of sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, behold, I come. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll, it is prescribed for me to do your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as you, O Lord, know. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. 
the justice I kept not hid within my heart. Your faithfulness and your salvation I have spoken of. I have made no secret of your kindness and your truth in the vast assembly. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. The second reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 4 to 10. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, O word of God. Glory to you. The word of God became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us, and we saw his glory. Glory to you, O word of God. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent to go to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I have no relations with a man. And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, 
for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Beloved, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Arise, Catholic faithful. Rejoice, Rejoice and renew. My dear friends, we come to a very great feast, solemnity in the church, the, the Annunciation. The Annunciation to Mary of Christ, that she will bear a son. We have before us the announcement of the most wonderful event that ever happened in the world, the incarnation and the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. There has never been any better good news proclaimed than what the angels spoke to Mary that day. In fact, that has been the reason why we call the gospels the word gospels meaning good news. It is that which makes a difference in the life of any Christian. If you have realized within the past few days, the readings have been so emphatic, trying to make or trying to teach us who Jesus Christ is. And if you had seen the encounter with Jesus and the Pharisees, he was so strong to them and making them cringe their teeth at a teaching that they would not otherwise not want to hear. But the truth still remains that Jesus is God. And he who does not acknowledge this has no salvation, eternal life in him. For eternal life is to know God, our Father, the true in God, the God who is, and Jesus Christ, whom he sent to us. Dear friends, if you know Christ, ask yourself, how many others know Christ to be God? Is it enough for me to know Christ? Or it is about the world knowing Christ? This is what you and I, Today is the annunciation of unto Mary that she will give birth to a son. This was a news that was beyond telling. Then out as if nowhere comes an angel to a young girl from a lowly family. And I want us to note that from a lowly family or estate in nowhere land to announce the great news ever heard by the human ears. God has spoken to sinful humans. God will speak to us. God is speaking to us. God has spoken. God is speaking. God will speak to us, even only if we will be humble enough to hear him. The doctrine that comes to mind here is the virgin birth that Mary conceived whilst she was still a virgin. This was the way in which Jesus would make his first entrance into the world. The incarnation is the result of Jesus being born of a human mother and of the Holy Spirit. This is a miracle that God has not stopped doing, that Though God is making the impossible become possible. How is it that human mouth, human persons are able to announce the good news today? 
At first, it used to be an angel that announced this news. But today, the gospel is being preached by human beings. Is this not a miracle? Is this not grace? Is this not the love of God that mere human beings can now announce to the world that Jesus is to be born in our hearts? Lowly estate. This is the first of the three things that I would love us to reflect on today. Lowly estate. Mary was of a lowly estate and lived in a no-name town. I don't, yes, Nazareth, we are told. But why do I say Nazareth was a no-name town? It is the place where anybody will be wondering. But what? that's why Jesus will be called the Nazarene. That's why it will be written. You know what is written on top of the cross? Inri, Jesus Nazarene Rex Idumian. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. How can you come from Nazareth? and claimed to be the king of the Jews. This was the you know, most, it was a spiteful definition. Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth, a town that nobody wants to think of. Whoa. Yes, it had a name, but what kind of a name? Yet it is of this that God would take us, would take up. This is what, my dear friends, some of us have a name to be alive, yet in reality, we are dead. And some of us are no, not known, but in reality, God knows us. This is the second point, highly favored. It must be emphasized. However, that despite all these qualities, God chose, God's choice of Mary to bear this child springs from his own grace, not from any inherent merit that Mary possesses. God gave to her. She is the object of God's unmerited grace, graciously provided goodness to her, and it would be done unto her. I have said time and again, anything and everything that you say of Mary, you say about humanity. Her description as one who has found favor with God makes it clear that God has acted on her behalf and not because of her. And that is what God does for me, does for all of us. This is the good news that God chose Mary. And when I say Mary, I mean God chose humanity. Mary is the mirror of justice. In fact, Mary is totally perplexed by the sudden announcement. And you must also be perplexed that today God is making out of you a great nation. She did not ask or seek the role in God's plan. God has simply stepped into her life and brought her into his service. I know when we discuss the issue about the, about the castles, the inner castles, and we talked about the giftings. Some of us will be thinking, I wish I had this gift of by location. I wish I have this gift of this or that. But what is important is that it is not what you wish you have. It is what God gives to you. If you know that you have a lover who is God, you desire not your own wishes, but you want God to feed you as a mother feeds a baby when only she cries. God will feed you. Do you have your faith and trust in him? Mary was not a woman who was just going around asking God, when are you going to fulfill the promise? She waited. And at the appointed time, God sent his son, born of a woman. She waited for the great announcement. Many of us, Seek spiritual signs, wonders, just to be able to have an assurance. What assurance did Mary have? Yet she was waiting. She didn't even know. God chose her from her lowly estate and favored her beyond all telling. 
God has simply stepped into her life and God will step into your life. In fact, by your hearing the word this morning, your prayer must be, God, I thank you that you are stepping into my life. Her asset is that she is faithful. That's all it takes. That's all God is asking of you this morning too. You need to be faithful and God would show himself mighty. She should be honored for her model of faithfulness and openness to serve God. But that doesn't mean she is to be worshiped as some of us have mistakenly taken it to be so. Mary is a model. She is highly exalted, but not worshipped. Luke wants us to identify with Mary's example, not to unduly exalt her person. The announcement about Jesus. This is what you and I are to do today. Jesus, in this part, the last part of it is that Jesus is the son of God. Number one is that, remember, Mary was from a lowly estate. Two, she was highly favored. And three, the fruit of her womb is the son of God. During that period, there were two cousins. There were two miracles, miraculous pregnancies. Each one had a hymn or a song after. Both of them were de declared to be great. But which of them was the son of God? The difference is that Jesus was the son of God. John the Baptist was the son of a human being. Both were called great, but Jesus is the son of God. Don't use your human mind to be able to understand what greatness God is. Allow God to give you that gift. Both were the result of God intervening. Elizabeth will become pregnant in her old age, but Mary will become pregnant, young, and even though she knew no man. My dear friends, all these are miracles for us. However, God's miracle remains the greatest. The Annunciation is the greatest gift that God has ever given to humanity. Pope Benedict XVI says, therefore, though it is God who takes the initiative of coming to dwell in the midst of men, and he is always the main architect of this plan, it is also true that he does not will to carry it out without our active cooperation. We must cooperate with the grace of God. God is stepping into your life today, but you must cooperate with him. These words are so deep and it may, it, may they remain real words for meditation for this great day of the Annunciation. May God richly bless you. Amen.